Hello WinFi. That's the tool we're going to be taking a look at in this lesson. So let's begin. So first of all, I wanted to make sure you all had a chance to go ahead and download the WinFi tool from Tetherbyte. And Helg has done a fantastic job right now of A, creating this tool for the Windows platform, which was sorely lacking uh, free tools, kind of freeware and cheaper tools for the Windows platform, especially with this much functionality. It is an enterprise grade product. I have early access to the 2.0 version that we're gonna be looking at in the course, but you can go ahead and download the 1.0 version and it supports most of the features we're gonna be looking at uh, today. So uh, Tetherbyte is his new company. We wish him all the best. And of course, as soon as the pro version comes out, you guys all need to be subscribers. If it is priced like I think it is, you literally cannot go wrong. It's gonna be one of the best deals in wireless software uh, for any operating system, but Windows especially. All right, so let's take a look at this sweet little tool in more detail. So again, WinFi 2.0 uh, Pro Explorer, what I'm gonna do is just choose my adapter here and it's gonna start a scan, okay? So as you see, the pause button came on, I'm starting to scan, I'm gonna jump through each channel every so often. I think it's a five second interval. So basically he scans each channel for five seconds, jump to the next channel, which can take some time to survey the whole area. But again, this is for troubleshooting and protocol analysis not just for uh, planning and design and things like that. Um, you're not gonna deal with maps with this tool, but you can use it for things like spot check and things like gap analysis projects, troubleshooting projects, right? Uh, there's many different use cases for this because look at the plethora of information that we get by using this tool. Just by turning it on, I get to see all the APs around me, by their radio, their SSID, their RSSI, all important RSSI to tell me, hey, I've got coverage here, right? Um, I can see a lot of other information, the band, the channel, the width, all that kind of good stuff. If we look, go ahead and just look at all, look, he's even got six gigahertz already programmed in there. What do you know? Future ready. All right, so um, if I look at all this, guys, I get just an overload of information, okay? And it's all very useful. If you notice, uh, you got the play button going on here, so he's recording. The, that's right, the information you're seeing here is being recorded to a file and can be exported for PCAPs, but the, here's the thing. Um, we, we can use this for so many purposes we're gonna be diving into. So, there, you know, it's been far too long in our industry that if we buy a pro-grade tool for thousands of dollars, okay, and we install it on our laptop, we can't just send that laptop if we're having a problem in Europe and have them do a quick scan <clears throat> to tell us what's wrong. No, we've got to buy another version of that for them. Now, it makes sense if people actually use the software day in, day out to do their job as a wireless professional. But if I just need information that I can't just get with Windows easily, there's not really a solution out there. This is the solution, guys. So this is a big deal if you have not seen this tool. Um, to know A, that it's there, and know some of the use cases we're gonna be looking at in this class. So first of all, let's go over it a little bit more because we haven't even really skinned the surface, okay? So yes, I see the max data rate, I can see the band, I can sort this information, by the way. So if you look over here, I can change the columns, and maybe I want, you know, the AP model number if it's available, you know, that data might be in the beacon frame, okay, vendor element, that kind of thing. I can see AP uptime like that over there. You know, is there certain things I want to see? Uh, you can see all the protocol support, but I'm already seeing that right there under the amendments category, right? So that that alone, guys, gives me a ton of information. And then we can also filter, okay? So we can filter if we need to look at a particular SSID. So let's say that my computer here is having a problem on, you know, connecting to a particular SSID. Let me just bring this down just a little bit. So we use our net show, WLAN show interface command. And we can see that I'm on channel 44 and I'm connected to Blue Wolf I with an uppercase F in my case. So uh, if I look here and I want to filter on a particular channel, well, I just go up here to five gigahertz, first of all, okay? And the next thing I want to do, scroll over a little bit, there's our channel, so I can just click that, and these are all columns you can filter on. How freaking cool is that? 
So there's the blue Wi-Fi I've been unconnected to in this case. There is the amendments it supports, country code for special streams and all that. Neg67. Now, here's the funny part, right? That is the perspective of this adapter. I'm going to show you something again about that. It's adapter specific, right? The RF variables, okay? RSSI, SNR, that's going to be per the device. That's the device's perception based on its sensitivity, okay? I've got another adapter plugged in here. If we use our uh, 8812AU, what do we see? So right now we're seeing a NEG68, okay, DBM. It might fluctuate a little bit. If we go to that uh, 8812AU and we look at the same, we're seeing NEG72 DBM. Doesn't seem like much being 4 dB difference, but that's half the power seen by the integrated chipset, okay? It's usually the other way around, but my desktop's under my desk and I got those big antennas behind the desk. That's helping things out a little bit. So we're gonna talk more about uh, understanding the offset of the device you're troubleshooting whenever it comes for RF specifications. We're gonna get into that later, but um, just know that that is something you might need to do uh, whenever you're troubleshooting things, especially if it's an RF issue and you're trying to go, what is this guy seeing this network as, right? Of course, we can run our net show commands, right? So we ran our net show command and we saw that we've got 75% signal strength. So uh, I'm sure that that's got a, uh, a good reference to it, right? 75%. But what I really want to see is the RSSI and SNR, right? And right here, I can do that with that adapter. So if I click on that adapter, I can see right there, it's seeing, hey, 68 dBm, that's what I'm seeing, okay? Um, I can get up to 340 megs throughput on that channel, but 20 megahertz wide channel, 348 uh, megs throughput, because I got four special streams on this bad boy. That's that new AX200 or AX210 chipset, I forget which is which. So I've got the ability to filter this data, but wait, there's more. Oh wait, there's more. Let's take a look at some of the details of this. So if we go into the wrench here, we can look at history over time. Got a nice little heat map. Uh, remember, we're not talking about physical maps like where I'm at in a building, we're not doing site survey. This is just a heat map saying this is our RSSI over time, right? Since it's been measured, okay? So you can look, that's five second intervals right there, right? All right, so then we've got our dashboard. This is our like Formula One driver uh, dashlets, right? Zero to 100 kind of thing. Um, it's not zero to hundred, they have different metrics, but you get my point. And we've got DBM, we've got max, min, and average, and we've got the link, the percentage. You can see the max, min, and average. Uh, same thing with the rate, SNR, and all that kind of stuff that Windows gives you. And this is basically just to include those. A lot of tools have these graphs to make it easy. And here's the thing, guys. Whenever we talk about our gap analysis projects, which are enterprise consulting projects to find issues with the Wi-Fi, I need visuals for people. If I start pasting in, hey, this is what I saw and here's the problem, and I just try to grab beacon data, that, that's not, <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't understand, understand that, but they do understand pretty graphs and there's several of them in this tool, okay? So, um, and you can change the graph colors and all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's take a look. There's our spectrum graph uh, as well, okay? Whoops. So I can see what's going on with the spectrum as well. So, you know, hey, we've got some, uh, you know, 80 megahertz going on there and Uni 1, we've got some 80 megahertz going on there and Uni 3, you got a little bit of Uni 2 stuff going on, but not much, again, residential neighborhood. All right, so, um, and, and we're right by an airport as well, so that, that could always make a difference. Now, again, one of the cool things with this, and a big value add, is that this data that we're just capturing right here is in fact recorded to a file. And that file can be opened and played again at a later time. So let's say I do one here and I say, here's the session information. And this is for uh, Rockstar WLAN troubleshooting. Okay. And we're doing the hello WinFi. All right, so uh, I've got my notes here, right? Well, whenever I go and I wanna see uh, those details, well, I've got a session folder right here that will keep track of all that. Look at all these, right? So that's what they were there for. The other thing we can do 
is we can also export, okay? So you can export scan, okay? Now, again, this is where it comes in that's very, very handy to go, um, hey, you're, you're having a problem out in this area. As a wireless engineer, we need these details. We need RSSI, we need SNR, we need channel utilization. Check out right over here, nice graph on channel utilization. Of course, this is uh, five gigahertz, but if we look at 2.4, for example, and this is just a reference, right? We're not doing a troubleshooting case study in this example. This is just how to use this tool. Um, well, if you look there, channel utilization is higher. So these are the details that I need to be able to see if somebody goes, hey, you know, the Wi-Fi is broke or the Wi-Fi is slow or any of those fun things that they bring us as a wireless engineer. Well, with this, I could say, hey, load the WinFi tool uh, on a PC. We'll go over how to choose which PC and the adapter, how to, you know, look at the settings and make sure we're, we're on the same page with the adapter sensitivity and all that kind of fun stuff. But uh, we could say, hey, load it on a PC, fire it up. I need you to stand in the problematic area, uh, click capture, stand there for 30 seconds or a minute, whatever it is, and then send me that file for me to analyze. Again, with other tools, we'd have to buy a license for them and uh, I'd have to have one too to analyze it because it's against the terms of service of so many tools to install it on a laptop and just share the laptop, right? Um, and it makes sense because we, we do need to take care of the companies who are taking care of us. We need to abide by the terms and conditions. All right, so, but as a, this is a very cost-effective tool and, and if Helg is gonna include that capture thing, um, at, for a cheap price, if this is anything, I mean, even 200 bucks a year or something like that, I would jump all over this and order one for everybody at the company. I'm not just saying that uh, because, you know, he's a friend of mine. I, I'm just saying that is a steal. And then everybody's licensed and you don't have to worry about it. And everybody can get this uh, access to this data. So that's pretty important. All right. Um, I'm telling you, uh, for Windows, man, uh, what Helg's doing here with WinFi, good stuff. All right, so um, hopefully this is making sense. I haven't even showed you one of the coolest things. Remember I said a lot of times, guys, whenever we're troubleshooting um, and we just did the frame capture, right? A lot of what we're trying to get to is just validating the management frames, right? Either on the AP side or on the client side to show that um, what we've configured in the controller is in fact what's actually happening. Well. Part of the benefit of this cool tool here, let me go back up to my uh, particular channel here. So let's go back to five gigahertz and we're gonna go to channel 44. I'm gonna jump on this guy. Whoa, look at there. So right here, we got radio tap header information. This is actually where it's pulling our RSSI, the noise and all that, signal quality. That's actually where it's pulling all of this is from the packet header. So Held worked with the Microsoft team to be able to pull that uh, from most of the adapters out there, pretty much all the adapters out there. You'll get this information from the AP, which is pretty freaking cool. So this is what he uses to filter all this information up here. And like I said, a lot of love and effort has gone into this, you can tell. And I can uh, do that validation without necessarily having to purchase a very expensive you know, protocol analyzer. It's different, guys where the other, some of the other more expensive tools come in. If I need to troubleshoot like application latency and a bunch of things like that, that those tools can do, they become extremely valuable. But if I just need to make sure that the settings, what I'm seeing over the air is what I set in the, you know, in the controller, in the cloud, whatever it is, this is an invaluable tool for that, right? And it, you, again, it's just a cost-effective valuable tool. So uh, I think y'all know my position on it. Uh, I better get a sales fee for this because I feel like I've, I've definitely promoted the heck out. I'm just playing. Um, it, it's just a good deal on a tool. And some of the other tools we use, of course, are very worth it. Even the pro tools that are expensive, remember there's a cost to time, period. If I'm working for a client and I need to be able to provide an answer to them in a timely fashion, what, what is downtime cost? Downtime is the most expensive thing in business pretty much. Okay, because you're impacting many employees, sometimes thousands or hundreds or even one, and that gets costly very, very fast. Okay, that takes up your time, their time, and lost productivity. It adds up. There's a metric there that's insane. So uh, there's a time to resolution, and the faster we can get to those answers, 
the, the more valuable those tools become and this tool is, right? All right. I hope you guys have enjoyed learning about this tool. We're gonna to learn a lot more about it in some of our case studies where we're solving actual uh, wireless troubleshooting tickets using uh, WinFi later on. So, hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.